Welcome back to another Faith Talk, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I want to talk about how wickedness is our default, and yet Christ is our hope. And I'm going to read a couple of verses of Scripture to just sort of point out how God views us as people, and then we'll talk about how Christ is the hope. So, I'm going to start with Psalm verses 14, Psalm 14, verses 2 and 3 which says the lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand those who seek after god they have all turned aside together they have become corrupt there is none who does good not even one pretty harsh condemnation of mankind then we move over even earlier to genesis around the time of noah in genesis chapter 6 verse 5 which says the lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and then in chapter 6 or chapter 6 verse 6 and the lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart this was of course before he flooded the earth in response so these two verses both point out that god's view of mankind is that he is a wicked being Ever since the garden, mankind has been in wickedness since Adam and Eve fell. Since they chose sin, which was to be separate from God. That's what sin means. That eternal separation from God. And the only way is Jesus, who paid the price for what we deserve. He came that we may be saved as a people, but... Unfortunately, many reject the message of Christ as... Biblically speaking, we were told that they were, and they have throughout the generations. Only a handful of people in each generation will find Christ. They will receive the Holy Spirit and be raised to walk in newness of life. Many people will turn on the Lord. They will turn on everything good that he has ever done for them, even though he is the only true source of good in this world, and the reason why anybody ever does anything morally good. Just his glimpses of grace are enough to compel that. But yet we continually reject him because the other force, Satan, is trying to steer us all away. And he's been doing that since the beginning. But a lot of people are confused by these times because they go, well, things seem to be getting worse. And I've been going over it again and again in my head because it's been a massive struggle for me over the course of my life. And especially this year, looking at the state of the world, seeing people just engage in more sin and more wickedness when... It seemed like a couple of years ago, yeah, it was obvious that there was sin and wickedness, but it seems to have increased. But that's because it has increased. You know, the world is growing darker. You go to 2 Timothy 3, 5, and it just lays out how the state of the world is going to be going forward from there. And it just has been spot on ever since. It's definitely a sad reality, but it's not without hope because... There is the Holy Spirit that has always been moving. There's two forces at work. There is God and Satan. And while Satan is making massive moves, God is also making massive moves. Maybe not in as noticeable of ways, but it's definitely there. You know, just earlier this year, there was a massive revival in Kentucky at a uh, at a worship service in their chapel, and people from all over the country were coming. You know, they were they were praying, laying hands on each other. There was healing. There was repentance of sin. There was beautiful, wonderful things in the eyes of God taking place. It was beautiful. I, I covered it. I think earlier this this year. It's just a sign of God moving. But then once the dust settles, people start looking at the wickedness of the world, and they go, "Oh, what was what was that for?" Did that really accomplish anything? It did. Hearts and minds were changed for Christ forever. Doesn't mean that the entire world is going to change overnight, nor will it really ever. The only time it'll truly get better is when Christ comes back, and it says he's coming to bring a sword, not peace. His time of peace was the first time around when he came and we killed him. So what do you think he's going to do this time? He's going to bring justice against all of our evil and wickedness and sin. Those who wouldn't repent, he's going to bring them to heal. It's going to be a very violent day. It's going to be a very quick day. It's going to be like nothing we've ever seen before. You just... As a Christ follower, it is very hard to look at the different parts of our world and seeing them go, 
Oh yeah, sin, sin is no big deal. When we know what Jesus died for. Uh, sin is no big deal when we know that it costs people their eternity. We know the price of sin. We know what it was paid for. It was paid for in righteous blood. It was paid, There was a steep price. God sent his only son to die on the cross for what we deserve. He bore the penalty of the sins of the world. No human being is even physically capable of doing that, yet he did it. He paid the price. We don't think about that too much, even as Christ followers. We just kind of go, yeah, that's the standard thing we say, right? But if you really sit and think about it, it's an eye-opening thing. It really is. Because he did it to such undeserving people. We, we are such an undeserving people because of how we have just spit in the face of God repeatedly with our very existence being separate from God and our wickedness violating all of God's commandments by default from the beginning. We don't deserve that level of mercy and grace and peace, and yet there he is freely giving it to us in just beautiful ways. It, it's wonderful, and it makes me want to worship him and serve him forever, and which I will do to the best of my abilities. You know? I love wearing Christian clothing. I've, I've got this hat, which is a parody of firefighting. It says, On Fire for Jesus. It's got a candle and a Bible. And then it says, I love Jesus on the, on the brim and on the back. Some people notice it. And then I've got this big sh uh, shirt from Caruso. He died so that we may live. I don't know how well any of you can see it, but I've been getting more and more of these. I used to just get a lot of uh, railroad graphic t-shirts, but then the Lord convicted me that I need to get something that just spreads the message because there's so many conflicting messages out in the world, and we need a message of God and hope and truth. And that's what I want to spread. That's why I started this series, is to, to talk faith and hope and truth in the Lord. It's very important because these times are wicked. They're dangerous. They're filled with all sorts of evil and danger and wrongful ideology and danger and manipulation. Manipulation is a big one. A lot of people get talked into things that separate them from God further. It's not good. We need to be guarding our hearts against the evils of this world and, and protecting... If we have kids, I don't have kids, but I know several who do, we need to be protecting the kids from the sin and temptation to sin and destroy their lives. That's what Satan wants. He wants them to destroy their lives while thinking that they're making their lives better. And to think that everybody who tried to keep them from making their lives better was really trying to destroy them. He, he masquerades as an angel of light to try and deceive. His main tool is deception. It's not come and worship me as Satan. It's do whatever feels right to you. And that will lead you away from God and into the hands of the devil. It's exactly what he wants. That's his play. And he has found ways over the generations to do that. And this generation is no exception. No exception. My hope is that by spreading the gospel, that I can be faithful to the Lord and make an impact on somebody's life. I can make a meaningful impact on somebody's life. I've... I've spent years of my life in various forms of reach, outreach for the Lord. That is my number one goal. Out of all the content I make here, this is the most important. The other stuff is just a hobby. Just talking about goings-on and different cultural things. But the most important series is my Faith Talk series. And I'm not the best at putting stuff out for it, admittedly. But I love doing it. I love doing it. Because I love God, and I love others, and I, I want others to know who God is, to the best of my ability to share. It's not easy, but I am devoted to it. God is good, despite me not being good. I am a fallen, sinful man who's doing his best to walk in the ways of Christ. But as a sinner, I fall short, and I will always fall short. But God is always there to pick me up and keep me going on that rough journey. He never said it would be an easy journey. Why does the path that leads to destruction? Many people, many people will go down that wide path. The narrow path that leads to life, a lot of people won't follow it because it's too hard. It's way too hard. 
But we're not walking it alone. We've got the Holy Spirit. That's the ultimate hope. That's the hope I want to instill to you, even if it's just fellow Christ followers watching it. You're on the right path. Just don't waver from that path. The unfortunate reality of being a Christian, as long as I have, is I've seen so many people come to Christ and then immediately fall out because the world was able to snatch them back away. I've seen the parable of the sower more times than I can count. I've seen seeds fall on rocky soil and be snatched away. Somebody gets close to God. They experience the Holy Spirit. And then the world comes along and tempts them with sin. And snatches them away. And you feel powerless when it happens. What can you say? What can you do? I've tried foolishly to try and stop people. And it was just that. It was foolish. I don't have the power to stop somebody who's devoted to being against God, even if they came close to God. I don't have the power to do that at all. Only the Holy Spirit has the power to convict the heart and the mind. So what I've learned is you just have to pray. Sometimes you have to be silent. You can't say something. You see people engaging in sin and you just can't say anything. And I know what it is. You see this with young Christians a lot. They get so eager and sin, seeing sin around them becomes painful because they know the price that was paid for it. Once you really understand the sacrifice of Christ, uh, it becomes painful to see sin around you. So you're like, you, you, you want to yell at everybody, stop sinning, stop sinning, stop sinning. But it doesn't work. Because they're not filled with the Spirit. They don't, they don't know what they're doing. You know, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They don't understand the gravity of sin and separation from God. And you can't convince them of that. It's just going to come across as preachy and like you're condemning them. That's, that's how most people take it. That's why the gospel is a very nuanced conversation. It's not just going on the corner with a bullhorn saying, you're all going to hell, you're all going to hell. You know, we've all seen straight preachers who do that. But there are also straight preachers who are trying to have a conversation about the gospel. And they're being lumped in with the people who are yelling, you're all going to hell. And so it becomes harder for them to have that conversation. You got guys like Ray Comfort who are going out and evangelizing, trying to have conversations, and they're attacked all the time. They're debated all the time. They're torn down all the time. But it doesn't deter him because he knows the truth. He knows the price that was paid, and he wants to spread the message about the price that was paid, regardless of the reception. Those who are truly in Christ are devoted to the cause of Christ no matter what. Those who aren't truly in Christ, well... God can bring them back into the fold. You just have to pray for them. You have to do your best to not be bitter and to recognize that Satan is trying to rob them of joy, of peace, of life. You have to pray against it. You have to stand in the gap for them. You have to fight for them in prayer. Sometimes that's all you can do, ladies and gentlemen. That is a lesson that I spent many years having to learn. You can't stop people from falling into sin and separating themselves from God. You can't do it. You can only pray and hope for the best. Don't shut them off. Don't, don't close the door to them. Just pray for them. At the end of the day, you'll, if, even if you're the only one who stands in the gap, there have been many times where I felt like the only one standing in the gap for somebody. And like it goes nowhere. But in the end, it does go somewhere. God hears. And God moves as he sees appropriate. So don't give up on people. Wickedness is our default. So people are going to be prone to that. You're going to see that. But Christ is the ultimate hope. Christ is going to be the one who, through the Holy Spirit, just saves people. Convicts people of sin. Brings them to a whole new place of life. Opens their eyes for the first time. There's nothing you can say that causes that effect. The only thing you can do is share the truth and then allow the truth to to move the holy spirit is behind the truth that you're speaking if you're you're truly spreading the gospel so you got to let the holy spirit work and just leave things as they are just be as good of a friend to somebody as you can be and then let god do the rest and that doesn't mean you'll immediately see somebody come back to christ it just means that you're doing as god commands and you're walking in his ways you're allowing yourself to be filled with the Holy Spirit and do and do the good work. That's all. 
So don't be discouraged by the wickedness around you. Don't don't be discouraged by the wickedness of the world. And I know, far easier said than done because it, it gets overwhelming. It really does. And you just want to lash out at everything, right? You just want to tear everything down. I can't believe how, how this world is so willing to embrace evil and sin. But that's the default. Where you got to find hope is in Jesus Christ, the salvation of Jesus Christ. You got to live that. You got to demonstrate that. You got to encourage that. That's what you got to do. And leave the rest to God. You, you're, you're not in, in charge of saving people. That's, that's God's business. You're in charge of spreading the true message if you are in Christ. And so am I, which is why I'm here doing what I'm doing and doing what I'm doing in general. Just spreading the message, starting good conversations, giving grace and mercy where you can. Some people will allow you to speak deeper into their life when it comes to issues of, of sin and what they're dealing with. But you can't just immediately assume that you can go to that place because that's going to drive people away. Some people aren't at a place where they're willing to have that conversation. So you got to pray that the Lord allows them to have that conversation with either you or somebody else who's, who's in faith. God will provide what people need in order to come to him. You have to trust that he'll do so even when it looks like they're going further and further away from God. My heart does ache tonight for all of those who I've known who have just wandered from God. For one reason or another. I'm not here to judge them. God has already had us judged. But I'm here to pray for them. To pray that they find Christ and they find life. They've seen it. They've tasted and they've seen that the Lord is good. But the world is a the world is a tempter like no other. The the spirit of the age is powerful. The devil is is really trying to draw people in. Bad company corrupts good morals. A lot of people surround themselves with people who are just whispering evil in their ear and it, it's it's it sounds sweet. But it's false. It's a lie. It's destroying them. So for those people, just pray for them. I know there's probably many people watching this who know a friend or a family member who has wandered from the truth. And they've wandered from God. Just pray for them. You can't do anything else. You really can't. And I, I'm sorry to be the one to say this. You really can't because it is a spiritual work of God. Our faith is supernatural. It is not natural. There's, there's no words you can speak or actions you can take. You can just be as good of a friend or family member as you can be and allow God to do the rest through prayer and through the work of the Holy Spirit. So don't fret over the wickedness. Just pray against it. Pray for the hope of Christ. And allow yourself to hope in the work of Christ. Thank you very much for watching. This has been another edition of Faith Talk. God bless. Have a good one. Peace.